Sup Shredders, my name is Logan aka Spiderhands and welcome to an SP Patrons video today that I'm making for Gamer Boy as part of a custom monthly music review. And if we switch over to here, we have ourselves a track on YouTube. This is titled Sena Kagoshi Ni Sentimental from Kumi Miyasato and we're going to listen through it from start to finish and we're going to hear what we think. Let's go! And Thema can off be, upbeat off the bat. Are those backing vocals? It sounded like there was a choir in the background, you know. It's nice representation of the individual elements immediately. I use that uh, bar extension now. Mm, nice and slow. repetition now. little bit of English and dispersed in there. It's actually a really enrapturing composition with the strings, the brass, the guitars, the bass, the drums, the keys. It's really full sounding and the vocals are the icing on the cake, aren't they? Go hmm. use of flams and 16th notes with the percussion. Love those trolls there, eh? I mean, there's just so much power dynamically going up into the upper ranges with the rise, the crescendo for the hook. With so much life at the same taste with the amount of um, space. Oh, we're going back to the hook again here. It's kind of a ballsy move having it be this close on the second run. Very sensical in response with those uh, legato passages there. Bow. 
<laughs> I mean, it's incredibly well done. The whole sort of symphonic element combined with the sort of 80s rock aesthetic, it's really engaging. I, I dig it. Welcome to the conclusion of my review of this track from an act named Kumi Miyasato, titled Senna Kagoshi Ni Sentimental. Uh, sentimental, should I say. Um, what do I... Off of the Megazone 2, 3, it's the or, original video animation. If I go to the... You, you can't see it anyways. It's, it's got got stuff about the, the film in there. Um, original soundtrack. Um, if I'm honest, I think that this is incredibly well written and very engaging. And I, I know engaging sounds so basic, but what I mean is just in general, the track is so tight with the vocal performance being so compelling and everything else being so lovingly placed and well thought out that really I don't think it has any weak spots. There were bits of English I got, because I don't speak Japanese natively, but there were bits of English I got where we were talking about like destiny and power and flying away and, and sentimental. I think that the track itself could potentially be, oh, oh love, there was love me do as well. So maybe this is a track about love and flying away from someone. It's those feelings of sentimentality towards another. I was wondering whether our destiny is to be with that person. Potentially, I'm not sure. Hopefully, you guys can let me know in, in the comments. But uh, nonetheless, I think that uh, it's a really fascinating tale there. It was really well fleshed out with those chorus passages. And there was a really uh, intricate, mesmerizing melody that the sequences going on in the verses were compelling as well. As well as the bridge sections, because we had verse, bridge, and end choruses, you know. And it was predominantly focused on the vocals. I think that was a smart move because of how well we could sing. The vocalist did a sensational job here of expressing themselves and uh, the backing vocals as well, charming as well with the choir aesthetic there was really cool. Be a comfortable on a head chest voice there. Wonderful legato passages, a little bit of vibrato there, sort of like spice it up there. And we had a great sort of chemistry with the uh, sort of the brass and the string elements there, a bit of call and response with them. We weren't singing all the time. We allowed there to be sort of lead passages with the guitar dominating it, which I think was great because it's nice to have those different bits of variety there with the part we focus on. If it's too much of one thing, it can become a little bit monotonous, uh, harmonically, melodically, etc. So, or tonally, anywhere, texturally. So it's, it's great. And I think that in general, with what my understanding of the track is about, I think that, uh, the, that we sung in a way which kind of makes sense. It's a woman sort of calling out, trying to figure out their destiny, etc. So yeah, it's it's really cool. It's it's well done. Uh, the track at 4 minutes 20, it's a great use of time there. We had a lot going on there instrumentally across the verse bridge chorus with the instrumental intros and outros and stuff like that with the double chorus at the end. There was absolutely no filler. And in general, I don't think it was a note out of place. But if I just talk about some of my favorite instruments individually, the uh the, the guitar riff the leads there were phenomenal the ba da 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 ba 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 and how they interacted with the strings in a similar part of the frequency spectrum was was dyna it was it was wonderful very expressive and it was like it was dancing around the headphones and speakers we were very comfortable with the distorted tone we had there the chorus he kind of more low-key cleanerish kind of guitars and the bridge sections were a little bit more sort of subtle i think it was a nice sort of textural timbre shift there but a bit of contrast there in regards to how we were hearing things and it matched the vocals coming down as well which is smart was not sort of taken away too much from the dexterity of the overall performance the bass guitar typically was in the low end, it's sort of controlling stuff there. There's a bit of a pulse to it, but it was usually sort of supporting the root notes of the harmony. The drums, there was a lot going on with the drums. We had interesting, unconventional extensions of some of those parts there where we would typically maybe have like four or eight bars, but then we had like an extra bar or like an extra couple at the end before we transitioned. The end of the chorus kind of was more sort of centered around how the vocals were phrased. So the drummer, as opposed to the band sort of circling around what the drummer was doing, the whole entire band was sort of going with what uh, what the singer had to do in regards to the lines they were doing. And it was a bit of an adventure in that regard and made it a little bit sort of more unpredictable and interesting because of that. Yeah, the drummer, whether they were pocketing with like the eighth note sort of cymbal groove, sort of chord note kick accents, or they were exploring some interesting sort of offbeat fills or flam parts there, it was, it was charming and it, they kept things nice and uh, consistent there. 
The uh, brass parts there were perky and bright and really uh, just what we needed to add a little bit of sort of sass and sparkle to this piece there. The strings are a bit smoother, but the brass just really added a bit of that kind of oomph to the higher sections and how they sort of, they flew upwards, they ascended really gracefully alongside some of the guitar and the other vocal runs at the start of the hooks. It was just really uh, wonderful there, how everything was so tight there. We also had uh, a few situations, I think, where like the either the brass was kind of in time with the bass and drums and then like kind of circling back to the vocals. And the, the strings, which were in a similar part of the frequency spectrum, are kind of comp, they were kind of comping with the brass in a way. They were together sometimes and then unified the others, which is great sort of shift rhythmically and with their phrasing, especially as sub leads. But you know, effectively, we just, especially with the backing vocalists involved as well, like this was a huge track, a huge sounding song, I expertly crafted and performed. And ultimately, I just think the amount of color and how vibrant it was made it sort of seem angelic and uh, enigmatic, and I just had a lot of time for it. The overall theme of the track with those bits in mind there with the variety instrumentally, with the consistency and competency of the vocals, was really it was just a phase and a place where we uh i think it sounded like we were going on a journey it was very intense there there were twists and turns and sort of emotional platitudes and switches with the way we were expressing ourselves and the way we were trying to sort of invoke within the listener that we were feeling quote unquote it was also a situation where that was simply needed if for nothing else but just to keep the track to retain attention especially since we had a we had, we had that extra chorus at the end which was kind of practically what we had before with the outro kind of like leading us out there it was a risky move i think com compositionally to have that sense of similarity with the outro chorus it might have been nice to have another lead on top but the theme the way things were layered was so uh was so so was so enrapturing that i think you can get away with having that chorus twice and it's not something i say often it's a really catchy track it's got a, it's a really i understand why people love it to pieces and it evokes a lot of the old school kind of anime soundtracks movies adaptations to like stuff like dragon ball and stuff like that that kind of tone to the production because we haven't got the production yet but just the theme it sounded like we were on an adventure um we were kind of working out how we really felt about the situation and ultimately i don't think we necessarily found a resolution but we knew we had to put a lot of work in and i think hopefully that's kind of what we were going for then i apologize just realized i've had this not done properly the entire review but finally the studio recording mixing and mastering it's uh it was it was commercial grade it was again for a movie soundtrack and i've got nothing but love for the effort put into making it sound like as good as it does the uh the vocals the guitars the keys the strings um the bass piano etc the, key, the keys the keys i didn't talk about the keys that, that was one thing i missed as well i know this is a longer review but the keys were sensational they formed a nice little lower mid resonance there that coupled well with kind of underscore undersiding the guitars with the brass and strings but like added a sort of a sense of charm and whimsy to it with like the really kind of pretty there was really pretty key tones as well on the, the right hand and the bass kind of formulating a sort of extra bit of on for the sub bass or the bass line uh, but it formed like a really powerful place in the tapestry of the track which really kind of they just managed to find a niche for it so going back to the studio production recording mixing mastering like just the way we put things in the mix and in the stereo field was absolutely marvelous we had an innate understanding of how to filter and eq stuff and it's not just a post-production thing to be fair it's a compositional thing but just i don't know how we managed to fit everything in a way which where things still sounded good there was no muddiness no resonant frequencies there the vocal takes as well as the choir parts were just incredibly well sung there's very little filtering to them maybe a bit of reverb but not much more than that. They, you know, like they were just great, great singers. And uh, there was dynamic range to this. There was an incredible amount of life to it. We didn't sort of like try to sort of like push too much in the mastering chain there. Though it was nice and loud, so the bus and bus limiting and bus compression was handled well. I mean, this is effectively a very positive review of this track from an ex came named Kumi Miyasato. Our uh, title Sena Kagoshi ni Sentimental, and hopefully you enjoyed it. If you did, please go show us some love via the various social medias and YouTube page and stay cool and stay safe. And please remember to support your local musicians and artists at the point in time as either help more than ever thought of crazy stuff going on in the world. And I'll catch you all in the next SB Patrons video. Spider hands up.